To the Ludcast of it all. I'm here as always with the yawning, but incredibly engaged, bright, and aware and alert, Jesse McSprinkleton, Jessington McShackletons. The third. The third. And fucking one and three. And three quarters. Plus. Because he's all that and more people. Say hello, sir. Enlighten the populace. I'm three quarters of a half wit. <laughs> <laughs> but twice a dim wit. I mean Well quite witty am I. That's true. Witty. <laughs> All right, titty witty. Witty witty titties. <laughs> Read us something from the history books, Professor. I okay, the first you know how it goes. We have to get some appropriate music. Professor Ludcastian. Uh, <laughs> PhD. Peckerhead. PhD. All right. We need some appropriately snotty music on here. Box violence not in G minor will do, man. What's up? Peckerhead dildo. Head dildo. <laughs> uh, where do these divine inspirations come from, Lord? We can only pray and hope to know. <laughs> the dark pit is its essence and origin, Alpha Omega. The uh, den of iniquity. Ah, uh, yes. Another afternoon in the den of iniquity. Oh, let's hear some. Stories from the histories of times past, before this moment, was all history truly. However, in this instance, it shall mean Africa in the late 1800s will be today's history lesson. And so it goes. This is long before the days of the Blim Blam movement and all these other things, so you must take that into account. These accounts are 60 years old. Do with that what you will. I will not be doxxed for this. Eat shisa. Here we go. With a little ditty called Friction Before World Conflict. Ha ha ha, cheerio. Such a bright and jolly popping rogering of a topic. Ah, yes, quite. Meanwhile, the Germans in 1892 moved into Southwest Africa. Under the Germans, the Herero population decreased from 85,000 to 15,000. Weird. Yes, devastating, really. The cattle dwindled from 50,000 to absolutely zero. In the east, along the Kenya Plateau, the Germans also had been building railroads. The work came to a halt with the outbreak of World War I. Eins! Prior to the war, Britain had been active in the north of Africa as well as in the south. The French, too, had well-defined plans for large additional pieces of the continent. I'll pause for you. Thank you for joining us again. In 1883, France took over a section of Somaliland, which held an important position near Bab el-Mandeb. Bab el-Mandeb? I know him. Near the southern tip of the Red Sea. The French planned to extend themselves eastward and northward from their colonies in Senegal and Niger. That is how you say that, isn't it? 
Then they would strike straight down from the Barbary coast and allow these lands into the west to meet. For their part, the British were eyeing Egypt. See? Bastards, man. Which was a self-sustaining section of the Ottoman Empire. When Mehmet Ali, the Turkish Viceroy of Egypt, died in 1849, the ensuing anarchy gave Britain, in 1880, <coughs> the opportunity to intervene in Egypt, her dependencies, the Sudan, and that portion of Somaliland which rested on the sea. The campaign of Horatio Herbert Kitchener, from 1850 to 1916, in the Khartoum region, in 1898, cleared out the Ottomans, made Egypt self-sustaining again, but under British protection. And who were the British protecting them from? Themselves? I think so. Kitchener was made governor of the Sudan, and, and so the Sudanese would never forget the might of the British, he had Khartoum laid out in the pattern of the Union Jack, the British flag. Kitchener was lost at sea, strangely enough, during World War I. Because it sounds like he was the right bastard, really. Fuck him. Listen, man. I don't want to be hearing your white man version of the blackest continent on the face of the earth. Africa goes to war. During the summer of 1914, Europe's great powers, England, France, Germany, Austria, and Russia, clashed in the grimmest struggle of the 20th century, the First World War. <coughs> Excuse me. Europe was shaken by an earthquake of artillery and gunfire, but even as war erupted in distant Europe, its effects were felt throughout Africa. Africa, unite! Afri Africa, unite, yeah! Listen, why don't you... Why don't you just do this? Damn you. This music is not the way to do this. It's a bit... Charlie. And provincial and colonial and all those things that we should probably try and say, hey man, we should put on something. Here we go. Like some jump jungle beats or something? Boffa's invasion of the German Southwest Africa started on January 5th, 1915 and continued in an unbroken series of successes through jungle and swamp, rains and floods. Imagine that. On through all of that. And on, with the last man stands, we shall fight on to infinity. Let's go, traps. By July 1915, all German opposition was broken. And the vast territory was in British hands. See that shit? Britain comes in. They let Germany go in, do all the dirty work, come in, snap their ass, take it. Such is the British way. 400 years, 400 years. I think this should, song should be redone a cappella. With all of the R and B, like the new R and B bullshit. Well, that's what they tried to do in the Afghanistan. You know, the Russians were in there, and then the U S. followed suit. You're black but, and you're proud. You gotta be free. Yeah. Yes. I mean, when we when we like gave birth to the Taliban and all that shit. Yep. Like here, here's some guns. Here, use these missile launchers. Boy, you'll take them on down. Compliments of the U.S. Just don't forget we own you. 
compliments to Tom. Compliments to Tom Hanks. Yeah, Tom Spank says, "Hey guys, I bought a few for you. Hey, <laughs> I shipped them over. Fuck it. Push his button right here. <sighs> Africa fights again. Listen, I just want you to know something real quick. Late in November '42." Yeah. The Army of the United States launched Operation Torch along the beaches of North Africa, Casablanca, Algiers, and Oran. Operation what? Operation Torch. Oh, I thought you said torture. Oh, well, I think it was just, a, <laughs> they just nicked that little last bit off of it and just said, hey, it can go down, it can look, you know, plausible deniability, it's Operation Torch. We all know that's short for torture, everybody. 1942 or 1842? 1942. Late in November 42, man, at the outset of, like, the larger WW2. Let's see here. But what I want you to remember is that infantrymen and rangers swarmed ashore in what was the first American invasion of Africa since 1803. 100 and fucking 39 goddamn years we hadn't fucked with them. When the fledgling United States had fought the Barbary pirates and American Marines had marched across the desert to the stronghold of the enemy. Operation Torture, Torch, er, was designed to wrest the top of Africa from the Axis powers, really. You know, when it comes down to it, Germany and Italy, of course, you know, they were going to try and get, the, get it away from them. Because they wanted it themselves, because they were right and true. Uh, um, they weren't greedy and fucking power hungry at all. Just to be on the side of right, the right side of history. <laughs> it all depends on what side you're on, folks. The right side or the wrong fucking side. Always ask somebody which side you're on. They'll tell you. Um, <laughs> are you on the mask wearing side or not? Yeah. Are you on the right side or the wrong side? Which side do you want? It just depends on where you're at. What answer is right or wrong. Uh, it marked the first large-scale entry of U.S. ground forces in the tense European Mediterranean theater and was the initial test of Commander-in-Chief of Allied Forces Dwight D. Eisenhower, who later, as we all know, folks, in his, um, in his final address to the United States as president, Warned about the military-industrial complex, gaining a foothold and starting to steer everything. And let's do a quick breakdown. If anybody wants to fucking email in those um, these stats, you can email them to the dot ludcast. It's l u d k a s t at gmail dot com if you want. Address the professor. Bloodcast Yep. And if you don't address it that way, it will be immediately deleted without opening. Eat shit. Don't have time for fucking around with you. But, in the truth of it all, um, if we break down what the budgetary spending of the government is and where it's like lays, lay heaviest, we can definitely see that the military and industrial complex so-called, has definitely taken a foothold and is acting like a fucking the most intense shop vac you ever saw for money right now. So, he had a point. The North African uh, campaign whose battle lines stretched from Casablanca, 1200